We're at Rossel Clearance Village in Strathnever in Sutherland, one of the townships that was cleared during the Highland Clearances. The Highland Clearances were an episode in history largely between 1750 and 1850 that took place here in the Highlands and Highlands of Scotland, where the tenantry, the peasantry, were evicted from their own land to effectively replace them with sheep because at the time they could get better economic returns from sheep and from people. A lot of these evictions that took place were at times violent. People shouldn't have been evicted. This was their land, this is where they came from, this is where they'd been for thousands of years. The last 300 years, the landscape has changed dramatically because of that change in, in land use and um, with the more intensive um, sheep farming that had been brought in following the, the clearances and the removal of the people from the inland straths. My ancestors were cleared from Kildonan and ended up on the east coast of well, Sutherland. It's very emotive, especially having read so much about the experiences of people that gave evidence to the Napier Commission about their experiences, often as children watching their houses burn down. It's quite hard to um, imagine what that would have been like. I look at this place and obviously see the sadness. There's a huge sense of opportunity as well in terms of the land use, the land use change, and the opportunity for people to come back here as well. Against the backdrop of climate crisis and aiming for net zero, we have a new breed of landowners in Scotland, which we call green lairds. The likes of Brewdog coming in and buying estates with the idea to offset business emissions, to plant trees, to restore peatland. Potentially are sounding for many people like that's actually not a bad thing to do. We know we need to reach net zero. We know that we need to restore peatlands to plant trees. However, many of us like to think that communities can do this and do this better perhaps. In order for us to speak to land reform and climate change, it's a huge opportunity I see of doing, being able to do that at a local level and people being able to have a say in how the land locally is accessed and how it's managed and tended is going to have a huge impact on climate change. So, and I really think this whole cycle we have with, with commercial forestry where everything gets cut down every 40 years. It's really very a destructive cycle. It's not healthy. My name's Craig Ward and I'm a woodland crofter at Kilfinnan and I'm attempting to establish mixed woodland on a former site of commercial forestry. It took a while to learn what was actually possible because the, the, the soil is so poor uh, kind of damaged by its previous use. I am struck by the lack of variety of wildlife and even at the lowest level, even at the sort of insect level and bird level. Probably more motivated now than when I started this three years ago to just create a woodland and for the most part, let it be. You know, that, that creation of, of habitat for wildlife is, is, is so important. We're distributing the berries and we've seen that a lot of little round trees come up. We just hope that over the next few years we create a new woodland and then it's going to be more of us to enjoy. Very much aware that we're not going to see it in its full glory, but she will. And hopefully with the new crops coming up there will be more young families and lots of kids. And you can already see when they're here and they're playing, they're talking about our crop, so it's really cool. I think it's important to, to tell people about places like this because there's many communities who are looking at buying land through the, the government scheme. And the more people we can encourage to do that, the better. I mean, I look on this as being my forest and a place for my grandchildren and my children. And I feel a responsibility without any formal sense, 
but I feel it's somewhere I want to invest time and effort. Dunbeg, which is a natural regeneration project. So I'm trying to restore uh, the ancient woodlands. And this was all solid, dark uh, spruce conifer that were outgrowing the oak. This was cut out about 24 years ago, but I'm delighted to see how well it's filled up. I think the trees know that they're being looked after. Um, and we end up being a bit of a magnet for people who are wanting to live a slower life, who want to be more in touch with the plants and the trees and, and, and working with the soil. It's a known fact that actually working with soil, you get positive energy from being tactile with the soil, by growing foods, it's really good for mental health. I was up here on a, on a summer solstice one year and I was looking down on all this forest and thinking why is it a problem to have access to land in Scotland? We've got so much land and all people want is a few acres really to settle. This village was kind of dying at the time. There was a very high elderly population and not enough young people settling here. So I developed this idea for a, a, a forest village whereby an intentional eco-village is established on the edge of an existing village so that the eco-village benefits from having a school and a shop and a pub and a post office and the existing village is benefits by having more people. It was about five years from that forest village model to eventually become the Kilfinan Community Forest. This is uh, the Kilfinnan Community Forest Hydro. It's a 75 kilowatt of full power hydro scheme. Probably generates in the region of 300 megawatt hours. It's called a run of river hydro, so we don't store water. Whatever water's coming down the burn goes over a weir and into a pipe, and that's how much water there is to run the generator. I'd never even heard of a community forest before I moved here. And then uh, all of a sudden I'm working in one. It's very different to being part of a profit-making organisation. The way sawdust, it normally goes to local farmers. And it can be used in the hot tunnel boiler as well. We've got a kiln for drying kindling and logs to supply to the shops. That's all powered off the hydro. There's going to be a couple of houses getting built here, even the forest centre. That's keep, most of that's came off the mill. All this came off the mill. There's always projects happening here. This is one of the first crofts that was created through Coffin Community Forest. Um, it's 3.85 hectares. We are currently at the top of the croft and this is the place where we're hoping to build our house. What crofting has already brought us <laughs> in the four years that we have been here is a, an increased mental well-being and health, physical health. And that has a huge impact on the rest of our life and the choices that we make. And the constitution of the community forest is to encourage and support the regeneration of this area. Over the years, what that has looked like is, you know, making connections and building relationships with a lot of different groups and, and people that are already existing within the, the parish of Kofinan. The school itself is able to make use of the community forest. It offers a lot of learning opportunities. I think we realise the children of this area are really going to be the benefactors, if you like, and we really want to encourage them to fall in love with the community forest so that they have relationship with it. And as they're growing up, you know, they will want to get involved. People aren't here to make money, people are here to live. And that's, that's the key part of it. There could be no better monument to the Highland Clearances for me than to have people back, families back, children back in these environments living here sustainably. <laughs>